I welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to our effective mediator masterclass today. Uh, today is uh, on the 21st day of the year 2021, and this is our effective mediator uh, master series. The effective mediator master series is a series that is run by Wasiliana Hub and as a series that's run by Wasiliana Hub, it enables mediators to be able to discover and to gain new skills, discover new areas and gain skills in new areas. So welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Effective Mediator Masterclass. This is convened by the uh, Mediation Africa Forum as part of the Conflict Transformation October Continuous Learning Education and Experiential Series in the year 2021. And uh, our session today on the 21st day of October, which is on a Thursday, is a session with our masterclass leaders, uh, mediator Patricia Ketch and uh, mediator Catherine Waroy, who are counseling psychologists. Our session today is on dealing with integrating the grief process in the mediation chambers, a focus on loss, emotional, physical, and material. To start us off, we will start off with the words of the Kenyan national anthem. Wimbo wa taifa kwa lugha ya Kiswahili and I will guide us in the national anthem in Kiswahili. The first stanza. E Mungu nguvu yetu ilete baraka kwetu haki iwe ngao na mlinzi na tukae na undugu amani na uhuru raha tupate na ustawi. My name is Wangari Kabiru and I'm delighted to welcome you to the Effective Mediator Masterclass Series for October in the year 2021. I am the convener at Wasilian Hub. At this juncture, allow me to invite our Masterclass leader, Mediator Patricia Ketch. Mediator Patricia Ketch, good afternoon to you today. Good afternoon to you too. How I are you? I am very well and it's, it's good to be here with you. So allow me to hand over this session to you. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much and good afternoon, everybody. We are going to be looking at integrating grief into the mediation process, as has been mentioned by Wangari. And I want to start off by um, just explaining or describing what grief is. It is a natural response to loss. It is the emotional suffering you feel when something or someone you love is taken away. And often the pain of loss can feel overwhelming. Uh, somebody may experience all kinds of difficulty and uh, unexpected emotions from shock or anger or disbelief, guilt, or even very, very, very profound sadness. The pain of grief can disrupt someone physical, someone's physical health, making it difficult to sleep, to eat or even think straight. Grief can affect one spiritually as well. These are normal reactions to loss and the more significant the loss is to one, the more intense the grief will be. The more, uh, um, there are different types of losses that cause grief. I'll just mention them through, uh, there's divorce, there is um, loss of health, loss of job, loss of financial stability, maybe a miscarriage, retirement, death of, of a pet, loss of a cherished dream, a loved one's uh, serious illness, uh, and loss of friendship. Loss of safety after trauma, selling the family home, death of a former spouse, end of addiction, retirement, uh, major health changes, starting school, legal problems, emptiness, and the list can be very long. I just want to mention a little about the losing of a job as an example of how you can lose multiple things. When you lose a job, one, you lose a place to go to daily. You also lose finances. You, you, you lose friendships. You lose, you, you lose your self-esteem. And so there's a number of losses that will go with that. Let's look at the death of a pet. When a pet dies, 
probably a dog or a cat. The loss of just having that cat with you every day and passing through and seeing or even feeding the cat, that is one loss. The loss of having a companion that you will be calling, it's a loss. There, there's, there's the fact that probably you've been closing the cat off outside the house so that they sleep outside. That is a loss because you, you won't have a cat to close the door, to close them outside the house. Uh, I've, I've mentioned about the job, I've mentioned about the cat. There is uh, the fact that loss is personal. Whatever your loss, it is personal to you. So when somebody looks at you, it, they should not imagine that you will be uh, going through the loss like them. So one thing for sure, we should not feel ashamed about how we feel or how we believe. We, we, we need to be confident that the loss is one that is ours, a personal loss. If the loss is significant to you, then it is normal to grieve the loss you are experiencing. And like I said before, the more significant, the more intense the grief is. Uh, it's good to note that we, we, we can be in a family and we lose a father, for example. But because each child related to the father differently, they will grieve differently. Each person will have their own type of loss. So loss must be uh, treated as a personal thing that everybody deals with in a different way. Um, there's no right way to grieve. Because grieving is highly personal, highly indivi an individual experience, there's no right or wrong way to grieve. You cannot be told that you will have to cry or you will have to do one thing or the other. Uh, that, that, that is, it's never the same. Um, how you grieve depends on many factors, including um, your, your personality, coping style, your life experience, all, all these things that, that, that are just for you and nobody else. Then um, again, the, it is inevitable that grieving process takes place. Whatever you lose, the grieving process will have to take place. And, and, and uh, healing, healing of that grief happens gradually. It will take time. It cannot be immediate. It, it, it will go a process one after the other in your life. And you cannot hurry it. You cannot say, I will just take one month and I'll be fine. Or my, my grief will just be one year. There's no normal timetable to grieving. Uh, there are people who will feel better after a month, others after a week. Others, their process takes years or even a year, 10 years, they are still grieving over the same thing. Then, uh, when a loved one dies, it's difficult to cope with, um, with that loss. People grieve in variety of ways, like I've mentioned. There is no right way to say goodbye to, some, to someone. Uh, some people may say that if you go and you, you view the body of a dead of your friend who has died, or if you go and you maybe um, make sure you've buried them, there's no way that we can say this is the proper way and this is the way we can we can cope with the loss of someone. Uh, whatever your grief experience. It's important to be patient with yourself and allow the process to naturally unfold. Sometimes we want to hurry, but that will not help. Um, there are some general ways that we can um, 
grieve and to grieve well. There is the anger grieving, and we have to accept some of these things. There's the anger grieving. Some people become angry while grieving. They will not understand anything. They want to uh, throw words at people. They, they want to hold on to their feelings. Uh, there's sadness and grieving. And this is also natural uh, when we experience this sadness, when you lose someone or something, you have a deep sadness that is real sorrow. It's deep in the heart. And then there's nostalgia, sentimental feelings, you, things. So people keep sentimental items. Uh, whether, whether it is um, the loss of a job or the loss of a person, maybe you are working in a farm where they had key rings or they had uh, t-shirts. You, you want to keep this so that you will remember what was happening. If it is a person you have lost, you, you, you want to hold on to maybe their shirt or their shoes or even their room. You want, you want to lock it up. You want that to be a place where you will be going to. And some people look at pictures. Some people don't like looking at pictures. Others will still want to look at pictures. So there's that way of grieving. And it also brings relief. There's the shock when somebody dies, especially the sudden death, people get shocked and they can be numb. When, when, when that happens. Are there stages in grieving? Uh, I would like to say that there's a psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Pulver Ross. She's a renowned uh, psychiatrist who studied the stages of grief. And according to her, there were stages of grief, but she studied a dying, dying people. And dying people had the following uh, stages of grief. They had denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So she had the five different uh, stages that she said the dying people would go through. Her work has been misinterpreted to imply that denial is a stage that a person experiences following divorce or death. And yet, according to James Russell, James and Russell, nobody will come to you and tell you that I'm denying that my father died. They'll be telling you my father died. So there is no denial. It's actually an, a way of saying, I know that my father died. So that has been misinterpreted from what uh, uh, Kubler-Ross study. There's also an implication that one must go through all the stages that she speaks of. Yet that also has been studied and it is not the same. People don't have to go through those stages. Uh, but anger is experienced, but mostly associated with the circumstance of death. So the anger that somebody feels when they they're grieving is, for example, in this time of COVID, somebody dies because they had COVID. And the anger is, why did they go out? If they had not gone to that place, they would have not died. That is the type of anger. The anger is, why were they so careless? What was happening to them? So the anger is towards the circumstance of death. The anger can be towards a driver. Why was the driver careless? They would not have knocked that person. So um, again, when it comes to the stages, we need to be careful. Uh, so, so, so there are no stages of grief. Yet because uh, we, we have been taught about Kubler-Ross and what she says, we, have, we, we, have, we tend to start thinking, which stage am I at? Where am I, where have I reached? Have I gone through this stage or the other? And, and we, we, we realize that even therapists tell us the same. Even the clergy, when they're preaching to us, they will tell us about those stages. So some of the common responses, moving away from the stages, 
uh, there are some common responses that are there. Um, reduced concentration. When somebody has lost something, and it is a major thing, uh, because like I said, there are many different things we lose. You could lose a pencil, that will not cause you the reduced concentration. But if you lose a loved one, if you lose your job, if you lose your house for, from uh, uh, auctioneers, then, then, then you have reduced concentration. And reduced concentration, sometimes it's simple things like, oh, I need to go and get a cup of tea. By the time I get to the kitchen, uh, I've forgotten what really took me there. Or um, I need to go to the shop. And I don't write a list. So by the time I get to the, the shop and I needed to buy bread, actually I cannot. Or I'm sitting with people and I am so absent-minded. So there's also a sense of numbness. A sense of numbness comes in that it doesn't matter what somebody now does to you. You will not feel anything. You will not be angry. You will not be happy. You, you are... You're just, I should just say, you're just there. You're not feeling anything. You're, you're really numb. It's like if somebody stuck a pin in your hand, you would not feel the pain. So you reach that stage when you're grieving. Your sleep is disrupted. Your sleep patterns are disrupted. You, your eating patterns are, uh, are changed. Maybe you used to eat well. You start eating uh, things that will soothe you, that will make you just enjoy, like, Maybe eat um, more chocolate, and yet you used to eat well. Maybe eat more cakes. Maybe change habits like eating habits, like probably you want to start drinking. So there are all those things that people do. Then you have a roller coaster of emotional energy. You're happy, you're sad, you're happy, you're sad, and, 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 and you keep moving from one end to the other. So those are common, very common with, um, uh, with, with grief and grieving. There are some tips that help us uh, to grieve well or to recover from grief. So if you want to recover effectively, it can begin almost immediately. Uh, some people say, especially for the death of a person, that it, is, it can be too soon to start because the person died yesterday or the person died, your, probably your child died two weeks ago. It is too soon to start addressing the grief. So an example that I think of is, imagine you fall down and cut, cut your finger real bad. Uh, uh, would, what would be the next thing you're doing? Would you seek attention? from a medical uh, facility, or would you just sit back and, and wait? Because the pain that you're going to feel will send you to the medical facility. So even in grief, we, we cannot say that there's, uh, there's a certain time you should start. It's like cutting yourself, and you need to start working on it immediately. While grieving a loss, uh, while, while grieving a loss is inevitable part of life, there are ways to help cope with the pain that comes with uh, th that come to terms with your grief, so that uh, eventually you you can pick up the pieces. You can you can be able to to start your life whether it is a new or things have changed, but you can pick up and start moving towards a recovery. One way is to accept the grief, that grief can trigger many different and unexpected emotions. Do not sit back and think, ah, I'm, I'm somebody who is usually patient, um, I cannot get angry, because with grief, these things will come. You will become impatient, you can get angry, you, you, you can get sad. So all these things, we need to accept that these are there. We need to understand that uh, Grief, uh, that our grieving process will be unique to you. You may have your support group 
you may have people around you, but the process of grieving is unique to you. Um, you need to support yourself emotionally by taking care of yourself physically. Some ways that um, have helped that we sometimes advise is that make sure you do exercises. If you can't exercise, walk. Just walk uh, half an hour. If you can do that, if you're in a place where you can walk, you do that. If you can swim, you, you do the swimming. Um, if you can't do that, there's plenty of exercises that are now online. Whether you want to do Zumba, whether you want to do the walk, walk, walk exercises, they're available and you can use them. So take care of yourself physically by ensuring that you do exercises on a daily basis. And whenever you feel that um, your energies are going low and you're going to a place where you're getting very sad, then you can do the exercises. Um, you can also get support. Get support by turning to your friends, family and, uh, and family members. Uh, you can draw comfort from your faith. You can join a group. Um, uh, sometimes you join a group if you are, if you've lost your child, you will join a group with people who have lost their children or others who join a group of widows or widowers. But you can also join a group that is going through um, a grief program. So you have that group as your support. Uh, you can talk to a therapist or a grief counselor. Then you take care of yourself. And I've mentioned one way of taking care of yourself is physically. You need to face your feelings, uh, acknowledge you're in pain when you're in pain, acknowledge you're sad when you're sad. You can express your feelings in a tangible or creative way, uh, depending on, on what you like doing, whether it is... Um, for women, you could like baking or you could like stitching. Uh, for men, maybe you would, you, you're somebody who wants to go and play golf or you want to go and, um, uh, uh, and, and ride a bicycle somewhere, you know, but you need to do that. Then uh, don't let anyone uh, tell you how to feel and don't tell yourself how to feel either. People would come and tell you, you need Cry, you need to, you need to, you, you're not too sad, you need to start being happy. Don't let them tell you any of those. And then plan ahead for grief triggers. Grief triggers come mainly with the loss of people or a divorce, a divorce, because the times that can trigger is a birthday, an anniversary, a wedding anniversary. Uh, a holiday, maybe you used to go on holiday every July or every August. Uh, you, 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 when that time comes, it triggers um, the, the grief. And so you plan ahead. There's a birthday coming and, and start planning what you will do, how you will handle that time. Um, I come to the myths because there are plenty of myths that, um, that, that we see as people grieve. One of them is the pain will go away faster if you ignore it. So you ignore sadness, I don't know how. You ignore anger, I don't know how. So the fact is trying to ignore your pain to keep it from surfacing will only make it worse in the long run. So for real healing, it is necessary to face your grief and actively deal with it. Then another myth that we find is it's important to be strong in the face of loss. You'll find people is telling you, be strong for your, your children, be strong for your mother, be strong for this. There is no way you can be strong for somebody else before you deal with your, with your own grief. So the fact is feeling sad, uh, frightened, or lonely is a normal reaction to loss. Crying doesn't mean you are weak. You don't need to protect your family or friends by putting on a brave front. Showing your true feelings can help them and you. 
So you 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 cry, you do the things that need to be done, and by that in that way, all of you will start healing. Another myth is <laughs> if you don't cry, it means you aren't sorry about the loss. I tell people I'm one of those people who God gave um, um, tears, and we were told have it, take it once three times a day, and I cannot cry more than that three times a day. So if I'm that type of person and you find I'm not crying, that does not mean that I'm abnormal. Crying is a normal response to sadness, but it's not the only one. Those who don't cry may feel the pain just as deeply as others. They may um, simply have other ways of showing it. And then uh, grieving should last about a year. That's another myth. There's no specific prayer, but I think I've said it before. There, there's no specific time that this is how long the grief will last. Another myth, moving on with your life means forgetting about your loss. That does not mean so. Moving on means you accept, you've accepted your loss, but that's not the same as forgetting. You can move on with your life and keep the memory of someone or something you lost as an important part of, your, of you. Uh, in fact, as we move through life, these memories can become more and more integral and defining the people we are. Time heals. Time does not heal. It is only a space that we are given to use wisely toward our recovery. So time, time will not heal. And um, I think that, that brings me to the end of the first part of the presentation before we look at how mediation, um, how, how, how we can use this in mediation. Uh, Um, I'm, I'm not sure if Wangare wanted us to ask questions now, but we want, we, I would have loved Catherine to lead us into a role play. Uh, we, can, we can be guided. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, I think maybe we just do the first role play. And uh, Wagari, I think it's okay with us. Are you okay with that? Yes, it is fine. It is yes, it is. It is. It is in order. Thank you, and thank you for thank you, Patricia, for the first part. Catherine Karobaroi, please continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The first role play is. Uh, uh, I'm uh, sending it back to Patricia. Uh, Patricia, you are in, you are the mediator in a mediation process and a mediation room. And a couple comes in. This couple, they have been having issues, and they want to. They have come for mediation on the about the child custody. Uh, in this case scenario of mediation, uh, in your view, Patricia, as the mediator, who is handling this issue, what do you think this couple would be going through? Thank you. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, when there is a divorce, um, the things, the couple comes in with the children and one of the things that the, the, the lady will be feeling is the loss of companion, the loss of um, probably financial health, the loss of having a father for her children her children would have grown with a father around them. So apart from coming in to look at child custody and how they are going to take care of these children, she is now hurting because this person whom she has known for the last two, three, four years, um, they're, li they're leaving each other. They're leaving each other. And so how, how am I going to feel? I'm going to feel sad. I'm going to grieve over this loss. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, I can't hear you. Uh, okay. 
Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, you have pointed out that these are, this couple will be going through grief. And I believe it is not just on one side, not only the lady, I think both of them, I believe both of them should be going through the through grief because they are both losing. And, uh, and they, are, that is, uh, they have a loss that they are going through it. Uh, and I think in mediation, as you have said, uh, a mediator takes, takes, uh, takes, con uh, uh, takes in consideration that these people are going through uh, grief and loss. So as you had the case, as you had this, um, this couple, you had it uh, remembering what we have gone through in, uh, in loss and grief. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, today I'm at your office. The reason why I am here uh, is because I'm feeling I need to give, I need to get my money from this person who has left me um, without, without a way of getting money from them. So that is why I'm here with you today, Madam Mediator. <clears throat> so I need your help, Madam Mediator. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, it is important that um, when people are in business, they are in business because they want to make money. They are in business because they want to make it meet. They are in business because they have things in common, uh, something in common. However, when the business goes uh, is gone, uh, goes south, they have they, they lose both. The business partner or the business person loses uh, a partner that they have been doing business with. And also there is loss of income. Uh, how do they have the loss of income? Because this person I've been doing business with has been giving me money so that I can give them the merchandise that I have. So as a, as a business partner, I'll, be, I'll experience grief. I'll also experience loss because I've lost a partner, a business partner. I'll also have lost a, a source of income that I have been uh, you know, getting from this uh, partner. And actually, it, it, it actually weighs down uh, on the business part, on me as a business person. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. And um, I think I'll give it back to Angari uh, before we continue. So Angari. Hand it over to you. Yes, uh, so th yeah, thank you very much to our masterclass leaders for that, uh, that demo, uh, which uh, has helped us to just get our, a, a, a bird's eye view on uh, the aspect of where, when, when there is any sort of loss, just the grief connection. And um, in the third part of this uh, session. So in the first part, uh, Mediator Patricia Ketch has taken us through uh, grief as, in, as a context and understanding it um, in its, the aspect of whether there are stages, the myths that are around it, and also the implications. The second part was um, on uh, the, the, the role play. And then now Mediator Patricia Ketch will now be taking us to the next part, which is on uh, the, the context of what uh, what it means for us as mediators uh, when uh, when we have when we have uh, someone who has who is experiencing grief in the mediation chambers. So uh, mediator, mediator Patricia Ketch, I think we'll there now we can now uh, hand over back to you, and then when you conclude, uh, then uh, mediator Catherine Oroe may have a few comments, and then we can be able to just uh, get to the yeah, closing of the session. So back over to you, uh, mediator Patricia Ketch. Uh, Karibu sana. We are now looking at the aspect of med of mediation of grief in the context of um, of, of mediation. Yeah. Karibu sana. Did I unmute? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mediator Ongare. 
we shall we shall move on to how does all this relate to mediation. So mediation is a place that decisions have to be made, an agreement signed, and that is really, really, really final. And when as when um, stated, where one's ability is to think and um, make decisions is distorted, the party can make mistakes. The party may the, the person come, may come in to, to simply finalize the process, you know, like, let me just go in, finalize this process, finish off with it so that I don't have to keep going for other sessions. So sometimes people just come in, they're tired, they can't think, and the only thing they can do is to say, let me finish with this and I go. Sometimes, remember we said that the thinking becomes distorted, so sometimes there's also confusion. You're confused about the state and don't understand the process it entails and because you're tired you just don't want to listen to what would be going on uh, so integrating uh, uh, grief to mediation so to understand what the mediator needs to do uh, uh, we need to understand what the mediator needs to do from the above details the details that we've given it is for the mediator to know what the party is going through, to find out from, from this person, um, what are you really going through? What is it that uh, you are losing in this court mediation case? What is it that you're going to be uh, left with? That What is it that you really need? So in, in, we've just mentioned the case of divorce. So in, that, in a case like that, if you put the... Um, one, 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 say it is the lady, you take her to the caucus and you find out in this case, what is it you're really feeling? What is it that you, you are really losing? So that you can find out what it is they're dealing with before you go ahead to sign the, uh, the agreement. So, so, so the, the party may not be allowed to process the loss if we, if we don't give them that time. And if we are not caring, if we don't have that sensitive mind of checking, so it calls for all of us to be aware that when, when these people walk into uh, a session, when a person walks into a session, that the main loss is not what they are dealing with. So when they walk into this session, then we have to be sensitive to find out. Assume it's a land case, find, find out what, what is it that these people are dealing with? As you listen, what else are they losing? And you could have a land case where somebody is talking about the children are now not bothered with what's going on. So even if there's this land case, there are other children who ha have been lost in this court process. So the mediation, the med med mediation, um, uh, process in a case where you need to understand what's going on regarding grief. It might be a slow process. It may not take the usual 60 days that we are given in court. It, it will take a little longer, but whatever the result is, whatever the agreement is that you will sign, that agreement will come out of well-informed somebody who has been well-informed, somebody who has processed their loss and they know that they will lose this, but they will gain something else. So the process will be quite slow, but it is worth it. Um, I think that's how we can integrate uh, mediation, uh, grief and mediation together. And uh, I would want to hand it back to Wangari. Thank you very much. Any, co any comments, uh, Kathleen? You, 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 you. Now I can hear you. Now you can hear me? Eh? Yes, I can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, what I would like to see is, uh, I think uh, Wasidian Hub is at the top of the game in ensuring that mediators are more skilled. Uh, they are doing the best and they are giving the best. Uh, 
mostly when it comes to grief, uh, sometimes not everybody understands what grief is in mediation. And uh, Wasdiana Hub has uh, done it well so that uh, meditators can understand that uh, even uh, people who are in, uh, in mediation, they come from mediation, or even couples, they can be in grief. And meditators, uh, you know, it's important that they understand what is grief and how they can handle such, such cases eh? or such case scenarios. It's also important that um, medita meditators are supposed to be skilled so that they can identify uh, grief in a meditation process. It's not business as usual when you have some, when you have uh, people who are grieving in mediation. And as you have said, where people are supposed to put uh, uh, paper now, you know, pen and paper at the end of the process, it is important that they should do it when they did understand and when they, their mind is set and their mind is settled. Uh, it's also important to, for meditators to understand what to do in case they identify that there is a grief, that there is grief or there is a grieving, mm -hmm. you know, are grieving uh, during a meditation process. So it is important uh, as Wasiliana have, they have done for meditators to understand what is, what is grief, how people, uh, you know, go through grief and what it can, uh, you know, what it can do to, uh, to the process. I think that is all what I have for now. And thank you. Thank you. And over to you, Wangare. Um, allow me to thank our masterclass leaders for that uh, uh, introduction. Uh, if And uh, with that introduction, we will now be able to look at the queries or comments that we may be having. We have the first uh, query or comment or question that is there. And uh, the question that is there is, uh, should mediation go on in the, in the event that we have uh, a grief or loss uh, as, as the context when, you have, when people are grieving? Should mediation go on when people are grieving and how to go through it? Um, I believe that this question could be in, especially in the context of when we look at our, at our, uh, the, the, the context of, uh, let's say, inheritance, the, and, or the context of uh, when people are grieving, we're looking at, let's say, like, for example, there's loss of, let's say, like, their parents, and then now we have children, and there's wealth, and, and then also, Again, uh, when people are grieving, perhaps sometimes when we have uh, the comp a company, the company may be closing down uh, under liquidation. And, and, and I'm, I'm taking the context that now when you say grieving is coming from the context that uh, the employees are going to either lose or they are losing their benefits and or even the owners of the business um, in such situations. So in, in taking in the context whether it's in a family situation just generally or it's in business situation or other life situations, should mediation go on when people are grieving? And then also if it needs to, then how to go through, to go through it. Over to you kindly, mediator Patricia. Thank you. And indeed it's a, it's a loaded question, which is good. Um, my thought is that mediation should not go on. As mediation goes on, and this is realized, the family should be taken through a grief recovery process because uh, they'll be making decisions in anger. They'll be making decisions uh, with, with minds that are not settled. And so as they make these decisions that are very important in their lives, they will not be making the decisions that are right according to themselves and even anybody else. So when there is a case like that, the best thing would be for the mediator, if they, if they can, to refer the, the family to a place where they can get help first and then come back for the mediation. When this happens and when they are taken through that process, you will find that when they come back for the mediation, they are 
actually able to discuss and to come to an agreement that everybody will agree with. And, and, that, and so in that case, I would, I would say that it is not advisable and the best would be to refer the, the group or the people who are concerned to, to, um, to, to, to help, to be helped, to a therapist or somebody else to help them. Yeah. Uh, Mediator Catherine, would you, Aware, would you have any contributions to that comment, kindly? Thank you, thank you, Medita Waroy. Uh, I, I, I believe as um, Medita Patricia has said, uh, these people, they should be taken through grief process uh, because uh, they, when, they have, when they go for the mediation, we understand they have to have a sound mind. But when they are grieving and the mediator realizes that this person, the grieving process, it is, it is too intense they have to be to be taken through grief process so it is important that they go through it we can start uh, you know healing because if you can go through it and um, they make the those decisions that is not informed decision because the decision will have been hindered by their by their experiences the the lost experiences that they are going through i think it is important that they should go through grief process first and recover Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for for that uh, additional contribution and also uh, for your input, uh, Media Media uh, Catherine Rowe and also Media Patricia Oketch for for that. The next uh, question or comment that we have is uh, coming from the context of uh, whether it in in the, and, and this is maybe more for the awareness of mediators. And uh, is it possible to confuse actions with uh, grief reactions? And uh, this is, um, I think, uh, mainly coming from, uh, you did, for example, anger. You did point out that uh, there is no right way to grieve and you gave um, a very good illustration, Medita Patricia Ketch, on anger and grief, uh, uh, sadness and grieving, nostalgia and grief, and shock and grief. So, could you either probably even highlight to us in the mediation, no, in the mediation context, uh, either an, an action, and yet it could actually be that it is, you know, a grief reaction that's being expressed. We can have that. That is our last comment or question for now. Thank you. Medita Patricia Ketch. Okay. Um, what can actually confuse if they are not uh, carefully listening to the, um, the people who have come in because anger, anger, anger could come in because somebody is ju just generally doesn't know how to manage their anger. But anger could come in depending on, on what the, the case is about, then anger could come in because of loss. So, so one of the things that we would be listening to. And I want to give an example, land, for example, because when a land comes to you, um, then, then uh, the, the, when, when a land case comes to you, you, you are thinking of the land and of the people who have come in. But we are not thinking of their parents have died, maybe their uncle died or their mother died, and here they are. So at that point, we then need to be thinking of this case has come. Have there been any deaths? Is anybody losing anything? For example, there's a land case and there is a place where somebody has built their structures and they are here and they are ready. So here we are. We are talking about the land case, but the children are losing the rental uh, items. So that, 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 that would then... Uh, raise up the red flag that there is something that anger is not a normal anger. Yeah, that, that's, that, that, that would be my comment. Uh, Medita Catherine Warwe, would you have a contribution uh, to that? Uh, 
uh, I, I think uh, I, mine will just be on the skills. Uh, it is important for a mediator to, to, to be more skilled because when, when you are more skilled, you'll be able to identify whether it is, um, it is just normal anger or this person is going through grief. So the skills that a mediator you know, possesses, it is important. So we have to continue building on, on, uh, on our skill, on the skills of mediation, just like the way you Wasriana are doing. They are making, uh, you know, uh, the mediators to be more skilled, understand more, understand the processes more, and then understand what people, you know, are going through when they come for, during mediation, or maybe when they are coming for mediation. And in the same case, the scenarios or the cases that they are bringing in mediation, could those cases be, you know, have a grief? Could they be, in a, you know, behaving the way they are behaving because of what, uh, what is happening in their, life, in, 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 their, in their lives? So I think it is important that the mediators uh, try to acquire more skills. Thank you. This has been a very good uh, coverage. And uh, I think we, we, we've actually uh, learned uh, quite a lot today. Uh, and uh, I think it's, it's a part that we say as uh, mediators, we have, uh, we have a lot of opportunity to be able to, you know, just learn from the multidisciplinary uh, teams of professionals and colleagues that we have. Uh, today's session being on the 21st day of October um, has been our masterclass uh, session, the Effective Mediator Masterclass. And uh, our session has been on uh, integration of grief in the mediation process and with a, a very specific focus on uh, loss, emotional, physical, and material. Our masterclass leaders uh, is uh, mediator Patricia Oketch and Mediator Catherine Warue, who take us through monthly our sessions for the for the uh, for the for the for the for the, master, for the masterclass. And uh, as we get into closing, I wish to find out if we have uh, any of the colleagues who would like to give a comment on the discussion or their experience in mediation, just before we can be able to close. Okay. Okay. And uh, so I think with that, because we think within it seems we have received all the comments and questions that um, have been there, we've had a great opportunity to be able to understand grief um, in, its, uh, in its own context, to be able to just get an experience of a role play and also at the same time to be able to We've had an opportunity to be able to understand or see the context of grief in the mediation chambers. And that gives us a very good opportunity to be able to uh, close our, our session. Um, We are not getting you, Wangari. You're not hearing. I think she has um, come. Okay, she's not here. Yeah, Susan, I think I, Susan, did you have something to comment on? As we no. wait for Wangari. Susan? Uh, no, I, yes. yes. Did you have something you wanted to say? Uh, not at the moment. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. Okay. So, Wangari um, is back. I think, yeah, she's back. That's okay.
Welcome back, Mangavi. Yeah, yes, uh, th yeah, thank, thank you very much for, thank you very much. And uh, it, it, is, uh, it has been a good moment to be able to just run through the session with you. I, uh, so at this juncture, we take the opportunity to once again thank our masterclass leaders, mediator Patricia Ketch and also uh, mediator Catherine Oroy for taking us through our session today, which is on the 21st day of October on dealing with integrating the grief process in the mediation chambers, loss, emotional, physical, or material. And the focus of these sessions that we are having as masterclasses is why mediators client advisors and the courts are unaware, unequipped and unprepared, and how mediation works much faster with the morning. So Asante Sana for joining this session. And uh, we will now be able to close with the words of the Kenyan National Anthem. And I will guide us through the first stanza of the Kenyan National Anthem, Kwa Luga Ya Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, Ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukae na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. With that, we wish you a good day at Wasiliana Hub and look forward to being with you in the next sessions. God bless you and keep you well. Asante.